Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm good evening to you and a very warm welcome to Vietech Babak's annual investor meet 2024. Thank you to all of you to take the time out today to be part of this wonderful occasion. Vietech Babak, a pioneer in the water sector, does not need an introduction. So I am going to go through and give you a little bit of an overview about the Babak Group. Founded in Germany in 1924, today as we speak, Vietech Vabag is a pure play Indian multinational in the sphere of water technology. As a market leader in the water sector, its operations are spread across four continents and on over 25 countries. Vabag is the third largest private operator in the water sector and is ranked fifth largest among global desalination players. Babak has successfully delivered over 1,450 projects over the past 25 years across drinking water treatment, wastewater treatment, recycled reuse, desalination, and industrial water treatment for marquee clients in the municipal and industrial sector. As a group, Babak has always strived to remain asset light and technology focused to deliver sustainable solutions to its customers worldwide. From groundbreaking technologies to comprehensive water management systems, the group has played a pivotal role in shaping the landscape of the water sector while resiliently weathering the ups and downs of the markets over decades. This year, Babak brand is celebrating a centenary, marking 100 years of legacy in delivering innovative, affordable and sustainable water solutions touching lives of billions of people across the world. It is our pleasure to host all of you for this informative and interactive session with the senior management of Vietech Vabag. Today we have with us Mr. Rajiv Mittal, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. S. Vardarajan, sorry, Whole Time Director and Chief Growth Officer, Mr. Sandhaprasad Sitaraman, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Shailish Kumar, Chief Executive Officer of the India Cluster. Before we begin, I might like to add that presentations and discussions during this meeting may contain forward-looking statements about the company and the group, which are based on beliefs, opinions, and expectations as of date. Statements are not guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that may be difficult to predict. Without much further ado, I'd like to now request Mr. Rajiv Mittal to cut, kick off the proceedings. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to a wonderful, interactive, and informative session. Over to you, Mr. Mittal. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Both uh, you are present here, and also we have our investors and analysts who have joined us virtually. Welcome you all to this uh, year-end <coughs> investors meet where we talk about our Q4 performances, our annual results, and also the things we have planned for our future growth in this sector. So we like to discuss all this with you. And most important, we always come at least once a year to have a face-to-face -face meeting, not only to tell you what we have done and what we are planning to do, but also to take feedback from you, what you expect. Did we meet your expectation? And if we did not, tell us where and also tell us your version of how, what we have missed and how you think we can improve that in the coming years. And we would really appreciate if you feel free and give us this feedback. That's the most important part of this event. And we will also use post our presentation of results. We'll also take about 20 odd minutes to celebrate our centenary year. This is our 100 years of completion of brand Waba. And we are proud that we are celebrating this. God has been kind to us 
to make us part of this celebration it's not common for people to get this opportunity to celebrate this centenary year we are part of this generation which is getting this opportunity and we are also thankful for that and we like to celebrate this also with you after this analyst and investor meet let's start with our presentation i think this is what i told you we are 100 years young but still going strong 100 years is for this sector is nothing how i don't know how many more 100 years we will see but it's important not to just spend 100 years but what we have achieved in this 100 years and what we are planning to achieve in the coming 100 years this slide you have seen it before for first time people who are attending this i would like to say we are a technology focused company we are just not contractor we don't do run of the mill projects we do projects which are technologically challenging which uses some of our proprietary technologies as i've said in this slide we have more than 125 patents and trademarks which we don't license we don't sell we just use for our proprietary projects so this is one of the differentiator we are still being a indian company we still invest money in our r&d we not technology upgrades both to develop processes and also products and this is one of the reasons of our success i think this is what today you all know better than me you are the investors you know the trends in investing today clean green blue sustainability climate change resource recovery circular business models are the key words they are just not words there are funds which are behind this and focusing on these kind of companies who are in this sector in this area of focus and that's where your company is every part of what we do it falls under this definition and as we go along we'll explain you a little more on that what i'm saying we are a global company our models are global we are based in almost 25 countries four continents very rare for a indian company to have this wide geographical reach we have built more than 1450 plants in last 20 25 years and these are all technology plants most important is our selection of projects we concentrate on payment security as a criteria number 1 for selecting our projects what do we do you can analyze it if you can't take help of our team take help of our investor relation company they will help you to go through our order book to check when we say payment security how do we get this payment security most of the projects are multilaterally funded projects world bank jica adb kfw then comes the sovereign funding from the central government which has a sovereign guarantee projects like amrut namami gange clean ganga program they all guaranteed from the central government international projects especially in middle east where they don't need multilateral funding because they have enough funds from the oil there we have letters of credit so these are the selections which i want to share with you we are very careful in selecting our projects which one we bid which one we don't bid the other one you will be happy to know we continue to be globally number 3 proud not only being a wabagait but also being an indian multinational proud to be number 3 in terms of service servicing people 
and serving them with water and sanitation thing. Recently, there was also a survey globally. We are ranked number five globally again in desalination field. And this we will talk more. But just to let you know, today it's not that we just talk as an Indian leading company. We talk as a global leading company. EP specialist, we have told you last year, I just want to emphasize again and again that we had a strategy, Riddhi. You, we have discussed this with you before, almost two and a half, three years back. And since then, we said the C portion, the construction portion, we don't add value. Let's be very clear. We want a top line, we can bring C into it. But we had no value. We subcontracted. We partner with somebody and it's a pass-through in our books. When you have pass-through, we don't make the normal margins which we make in our technology project. So we decided we will reduce our C. Unless there is a compulsion from the client forces us to take it, that's not our preferred option. So C is going out of our business. We want to be a technologically focused company. And that is the reason we talk about technology, engineering, and supply of key components is our business. It will continue that way. It's also important that uh, we remain asset light. You, some of you would wonder, in last three years, we have invested in some of the HAM projects, hybrid annuity model, where Government of India is investing 40%, and as a private sector, we are supposed to invest 60%. If we do those projects, how can we remain asset light? Very simple. In this 60%, 75% is a debt, which has a no recourse on the listed company. It's at the SPV level. 75% means 45% of 60% is debt. Of the balance, 15% is the equity. And in that 15%, our share of equity is 25%. Now, you can calculate in a 100 of the project, if I have 15%, 25%, hardly, we are talking about 3.75%. 3.75% is my investment in HAM to get a project of 100. I just want you to understand how we have structured our HAM project where we don't want to invest. And you can understand on a 100 project, if margin we don't make three and a half percent, what are we doing? So the margin on the project far, far exceeds the investment in equity we make. Plus, we always sign an agreement after construction, after COD, one or two years of operation, we show them that it, the plant is performing whatever we have designed and constructed, and then we have a clause to sell even that 3.75%. So we want to keep our books very light. And you can check this. You have the balance sheets. Company has announced it. So very soon you will have the annual report. Please check our net block or gross block will be the lowest in this sector. And we want to remain that way. We have no ambition to build our balance sheet heavy, go for debt, and have concessions on our balance sheet. We will take part because we are the leaders, but we will not take assets on our balance sheet. So this is also a point I want you to very clearly do. We also want to focus on manufactured water. You would ask me, are you God? Are you going to manufacture ice, which is going to melt and give us water, or are you going to give us rain? We are going to do neither, but we want to help God in giving an alternate sources of water. These are not the only two sources. The melt of glaciers from Yamunotri and Gangotri that runs into Ganga and Yamuna. We also are neither rain where God is giving. With all this climate change, we all have gone through this year, the heat wave, what we are facing. Naturally, somewhere is telling us that climate change is happening. It's not only in words. In real fact, it's happening. And there's a common thing. In summer, there's a drought. 
water rationing, water cutting. Industries are the first one to suffer because they want to give it to domestic consumers. Just imagine the industries who have spent billions to create that industry. And if they don't run, what happens to their P&L account? That is where we want to come in and say that we want to support, support God in giving water, both for domestic usage as well as for commercial or industrial usage. What we do, we go to two perennial sources which are drought proof. Obviously, the one you can guess is sea, the ocean. Will you ever see an ocean drying up under the worst of the condition? It's a perennial source. It's a drought proof source. Why don't we use that water which is available in ample and use that for giving fresh water drinking water and that's what we have been advocating and that's where you have seen that we have been rated number five globally so not only we talk we also have built plants we have experience and the market recognizes us what is the second perennial source which will never dry up the wastewater wastewater which goes from our kitchens from our shower rooms from our toilets from our washings all this water ever will dry up? Not at all, no? So that's also a perennial drought-proof source. So we have to recycle that. Those days are gone that once through goes out. No. Please collect that, what you have used. We call it used water. Treat it. Treat it to a standard, which is drinking water standard. And whether you use for drinking, or you use for irrigation, or you use for industrial and commercial use, this is an alternate source of water. And that's what we call it as manufactured water. Experience leadership, I don't think, as an organization. We were the first company to be listed as a pure play water company. We had no comparable. Even today, I would say, there are no comparables of what we do, what technologies we have, what capabilities we have, what size of plants we have done, what number of references we have. There are no comparables. And today, the comparables are only in the global market. This remains like that. And we have a very experienced team. My colleagues are here. If you take an average age of our top management and senior leadership team, is 30 years plus. So we have been all living in water sector for many, many decades. I think also what is important is from governance point of view. Our board comprises of two-thirds independent directors. Only me and my colleague, Mr. Vardarajan, are executive directors. Rest four out of six are independent directors. Most of the committees, or almost I would say all, of the committees have independent directors as the chairman, chairperson. But this is the governance in the company, which also is very important to say that your money is safe. It's used for the purpose you have invested in the company. And that's my assurance that everything, what you expect us to do, we do it. As I told you, we are total management com water management company. We do from conceptualization to commissioning. We also, as I told you, we invest. Whether it's HAM projects or build on operate projects, we invest. But we still remain asset light. I gave you one example. That is what will tell you. Though we may invest in these projects, but we will remain asset light. That is something we will not deviate. And you can see. Whatever is type of project, whether industrial, municipal, water, wastewater, recycle, desal, everything is under one brand called Wabak. And Wabak is a total water management company, and we have no ambition, no desire to diversify. We want to remain only in water. This is a short history. I think you all know that... Uh, 
we are celebrating our 100 years as a group in india we came in 96 and 97 early with a bank project of reliance jamnagar that time the single largest project it was a startup company with me there were only other five members when we got india's largest project see the confidence of group like reliance had in our ability those days 97 to give us the largest project in the country with only total six including me we got the project and we executed successfully we till today we remain a preferred contractor to reliance doing all the projects and in 2005 we did the management buyout with help of icsa ventures and in 2007 we did a historic never heard of reverse acquisition a daughter company buying the parent company we did indian management buyout of the indian subsidiary and indian subsidiary went on to buy the global waba company from siemens where we got the global references brands technology technology staff experience staff all this in 2007 we did a reverse acquisition which you would not hear many of those where a daughter company is buying the parent company 2010 i think you all know our journey we did a management uh, we did a ipo which was a successful ipo and since then we have been getting your support encouragement and trust and we have today grown from a startup six member team to globally recognized corporation we are globally number 3 and this has all happened because the love and trust we have of the investors like you now this is what we talked about clean green circular economy climate change this single slide will tell you it's not only the talk here is the numbers which support the talk you see in terms of greenhouse gases we are path to net zero that is the way we are moving water neutral plants where we recycle 100% of the water what is also called zero discharge plant so you have no really issues of discharge standards and also because you are recycling the unit is self sufficient in water the reliability of water is there and that is what it is and then you have waste to energy which is a topic you would have also seen the announcement compress biogas all this resource recovery whether it's sludge manure nutrients fertilizer gas or water we are recovering everything from water nothing from water goes waste or waste water goes waste everything is recycled circular economy going back where it is come is going back so it's also conserving water desalination recycle these are the numbers you have against each of this green energy how many megawatt we are generating water how much we are treating clean water power saving for the clients we are doing and greenhouse gases how many tons we are reducing so these are all things we do which uh, <coughs> is expected of us to do and that is what i think the trend in the market you all know as investors these are becoming important parameters and your company is right in it esg another important topic luckily our business is all about it we talked about governance we don't need to talk about social because our business is all about social <clears throat> whether we provide clean water we provide healthy environment to the communities that's our business and gov- uh, environment again is to protect the environment by treating 
things and not discharging untreated waste. This is what we talked about. Me and Mr. Vardarajan are on the board as executive directors. Then next row we have our independent directors. And then Mr. Tanda Prasad Sitaraman is our CFO. Dailesh Kumar is our CEO for India Cluster. This is one of our biggest cluster in the whole group. They almost done about 75-80% business is done from India Cluster. Then we have Mahmud Gedek. He is our CEO for Europe Cluster. <coughs> you see, all the marquee names, what you expect a company of our stature should have, we have it. Whether it's in India, or global, we have all the names. And regarding funding agency, I told you, we have all the funding, whether JICA, ADB, World Bank, Sovereign Fund, Exim Bank, everybody, they are supporting us with funding so that we don't have an issue of payment security and serving all the clients, not only municipal corporation, but also large industrial infrastructure clients. This is a slide I showed you last year. I just want to repeat and recap. This is a strategy about two and a half, three years back. We developed it, board approved it, and we have implemented it. And you have seen the results over the last two and a half, three years that everything has paid. We were not very strong in marketing. So it was very clear that you should open up markets, have your best people go and sell advanced technology projects. This is what was one. The second was about EP, industrial and in international. That's where the margin is. That's where the less competition is. That is where your skills and technology and your patents will be valued. So you should do more in this sector. Then service sector, because it's a annuity business, less risk, good cash flow, good margins, grow this service sector. Remain asset light, we have discussed global delivery centers that don't focus only on local, have capability to deliver projects anywhere in the world. And that's what is a work in progress at the moment where we are developing global delivery centers. This is the future. As I told you, also we want to go and give you a perspective where companies investing their time and money for future. This may not be relevant now, maybe one year from now, two years from now, three years from now, but that's the moment we are doing. The first one, you would have seen our announcement where we are getting into compressed biogas. We have been in business of producing biogas for last three, four decades. But all the time we are using biogas to produce electricity, which is used for captive purposes of running our own plants. But today we are going to stop that. This is a low value add product of converting biogas into electricity. We are going to convert into compressed natural gas. Government has fixed the tariffs for that. If you sell it to the government, even PSUs, or gas stations, where you go and fill this gas for your vehicles or you put it in the pipeline which are running near your plant, you can have an agreement, a metering system where you can pump it into that. Your What you get is fixed by the government of India. And today the rate they have fixed are very, very attractive. So which is forcing us to stop this power production and get into compressed biogas. It is a much more lucrative model. <clears throat> Next one is digitization. We all know whether it's your industry or our industry, getting skilled, qualified, experienced manpower, which are committed to business is becoming a tough job, especially growing industry. We have grown, as I told you, from six to we will have almost about 1,500, 1,600 Qualified staffs plus we have number of workers is a tough job. So we said we will take help of digitization so that this knowledge which we have gained, it can be reused 
and help us in designing, executing and operating plants. And that is what we are implementing now. The experience will be digitized in the system and it will have all the information which is required by the people to operate. We don't need hundreds of experts. The few experts will put it in the system and that system will be available to thousands of people for them to use it. That digitization is in process. We have announced to the market. We have signed with some specialist company who is helping us to digitize all this knowledge and information we have. Then the big thing, everybody talks about hydrogen. That's the next big fuel, especially green hydrogen. This is where company is moving to. And we have no ambition of producing hydrogen. We have no ambition of producing electrodes required for hydrogen. We have no ambition of producing green energy, which is required for electrolysis. We are a water company, and we want to be only a water partner for hydrogen production. Hydrogen is produced from water. It's H2O, H2O. H2 is broken from O by electrolysis. And that's our job to give ultra-pure water required for H2 production. This ultra-pure water, why I say is ultra-pure? Because if it has salts, at homes we have seen scaling of electrodes will happen, which will reduce the efficiency of electrodes, and that's where our role comes in, to be a ultra-pure water supplier for hydrogen production. That's the role we are playing, and I'm sure in two, three years, it will be more affordable. More plants will come. We will be ready for that. Already there are half a dozen developers are talking to us to be the water partner. Semiconductor. During COVID, we all know the huge demand supply gap which was created, which has completely upset our supply chain management. Nobody wants it, whether it's developing world or developed world, all are setting up their shops to be self-reliant. And there will be huge investment going into semiconductor. We are already seeing some of it and a lot more to come. And again, we want to be a water partner here. We don't want to produce semiconductors. Semiconductors need ultra, ultra pure water. We have already done some plant where we have been a water partner. We just want to replicate that and do more of such plants because this is also a specialized field to produce ultra, ultra pure water for semiconductors so that on the chips, there is no scaling happening. Blue seed, recent announcement. It's from a failing and a spirit that society has given us a lot to make us what we are. I am personally obliged and thankful and humbled with the kind of support I got from all of you. Now it's our turn when we have become big and our affordability has gone up, why we should not encourage and give this pre-seed and seed capital to the bubbling young entrepreneurs who have some idea but lacking finance. Finance, a lot of people can give. But along with finance, technology support, engineering support, experience, and above all, the market reach, which we want to give it to these young entrepreneurs and help them to commercialize their ideas, which may be only an idea on paper, maybe a pilot idea, maybe they have done a prototype, but we want to support them with enough finance and more than that, our knowledge, experience, know-how, technology to make it commercialized. And that's our commitment to the society that we want to create more young entrepreneurs to develop their technologies and product into this water sector. This is the latest initiative, and we are proud that we'll contribute something to the water sector.
this is what the region we are in <clears throat> you know whether we are in india huge investments last 10 years you see how the water sector has attracted investments whether it's namami gange jal jeevan mission har ghar mein nal all this initiative jal jeevan mission has come swachh bharat amrut to all this are having huge investments and government has supported that clearly there is a commitment on part of government to provide clean safe drinking water at your doorstep and also to have a clean and healthy environment around you so this is a big big thing rr recycle reuse we have no choice i'm very very firm believer we have no choice i don't know if some of you have seen recent bangalore episode i forced the government to say that we will have two pipe system which we have been advocating for many many years that one you can have for portable but all other use in our house why can't you have recycled water which is as good as portable water but only psychologically we don't want to take it you take it biologically chemically equal but at least use it for your washing for your toilet flushing most of the water goes in toilet flushing at least you can use that and conserve the good water now they are saying yes it makes sense and we'll go for two pipe system one for fresh water one for recycled water this is the way forward the whole country has to go through whether we like it or we don't like it we have to go through it regulatory lot of regulations guidance from the government but we typical as a country we don't respect that we always find a way around it now this regulatory mechanisms are becoming very tough we have a few projects where people were just illegally tapping into the ground water as if it's their water they don't realize it's not their water it's not the state water it's not a uh, local body water it's a global resource you just cannot tap into the ground water and take the ground water now government is becoming very strict central water commission is disconnecting these connections finding people that you can't take if they cannot take ground water what is the next water they want recycle water nobody is going to close their factories because government is stopping their ground water this examples we have in chennai we have in surat now we are building a plant in ghaziabad all belonging to this category they are now signing water purchase agreements because otherwise they have no water to run their establishments what they have set up so this is the way forward for water sector the cis countries are emerging in a big way with this russia ukraine war going on other cis countries kazakhstan uzbekistan all this stands the cis countries there's a tr- what happened the power went off hmm ah uh, thank you if my time is up you tell me so this is all what we have to do and today that is a was this is what we are going into that new market and tremendous focus especially the west world is slowly moving out from that region and this is something we are going to replace them this is all cis countries excluding russia again asia pacific Asia Pacific is a great market huge potential this is also emerging market we have been successful in the past 
in between we have taken our focus away from it because we were so busy in the rest of the world this is back in focus you have seen we are getting projects we got it in bangladesh we had recently got it in nepal and this focus is back middle east is a future growth engine no doubt about it i'm sure you all are following not only in water sector but other sectors also that's a gold mine countries like saudi is leading the way ua is not far behind and other countries are also following it but the focus on this is massive the projects are mega projects funding is available and they are expecting private sector to invest we are not investors there let me make it very clear we don't even take this 3 4% investment there we are pure technology partner to the developers who are going to invest for 25 years we will build that plant for them if they require our support during onm we are available otherwise in this market of middle east we are pure technology partner or technical partner and you see the investment which is happening in middle east and africa even in africa in egypt we are pre qualified for the highest level of the future projects they are going to come with 1000 mld desalination plant you can see what is the stature of the company have grown from where to where today we are second to none globally when it comes to getting pre qualified for a project our balance sheet is supporting our technical references are supporting so this is very very important to say that water sector is booming and it will remain so for many decades or i should say for generations to come it's not a limited opportunity it is a very long term opportunity for generations to come so much business has to be done and it will take decades to meet that expectation and build a water security which we want both for human consumption as well as for industrial requirement <coughs> i will now request my colleague our cfo mr skanda prasad to take the financial presentations thank you uh good evening let me take a few minutes to go through the financial highlights uh, of the quarter and year ended and also give you a uh, outlook for the next 3 to 5 years that we are expecting uh on the performance side this is how we performed for the uh, quarter and the year ended 23 24 uh consolidated revenue of about 28 564 million consolidated ebitda over 13% and a pat of 245 crores uh, with a year over year growth of about 9% our order book continue to remain strong at about 114 billion which gives us a good 3 year revenue visibility we continue to have a profitable growth journey even in this year by profitable growth we mean the pat growing at a rate faster than the rate of sales growth these numbers are like to like uh, because we had divested two of our european subsidiaries in the last year and this is part of a strategy to continue reducing our exposure to geographies in europe which are more top line driven rather than bottom line driven and we are now focusing on how to improve profit rather than merely chasing top line which is for us is just a consequence these are the key performance metrics for the last year as i said ebitda of over 13% pat of about 9% we continued to generate cash this year as well a free cash flow 
of about 168 crores and we closed with a net cash positive position of 236 crores. We continue to remain asset light, as Mr. Mittal said, and that's reflective in our ROC, which is about 19%. This is a slide probably, I think we as an organization and as a management team, we're all proud of the turnaround from a cash perspective that we have been able to demonstrate with our strategy playing out well. We were at one point a net debt company. Uh, this is about eight years back, and you see the whole transition into a net cash company. This is the fourth year where the company and the group has generated a net cash position, and we ended the year with 236 crores. Mr. Mittal spoke about the strategy Vriddhi, which uh, we uh, embarked upon about three years back. And I think it is uh, good to understand it in numbers to see that the strategy is actually working. These are the key metrics as far as uh, the strategy is concerned. And we have just averaged it over three years for some of the business metrics so that there is no lumpiness that is seen. You would see that our industrial revenue is about 30% over the last three years. International revenue is about 40%. In some years, we were even more than 50%. Our EP, which is a major margin accretion as well as a cash driver, was one more than one-third of our EPC revenues. And our O&M reached a 15% average. We are in the 15 to 17% kind of range now. And our focus is to take it to 20% in the medium term. Our ROCs were at one point at 12 12.3%, which has now moved to the 19% range. And our ROE, which was about 8%, has moved to a 15% range over the last three years. EBITDA, again, we were 7 8%, and today we are over 13% in EBITDA, driven by more EP, more international, more industrial, and gradually increasing our O&M uh, business. These are all uh, triggers for the uptick in the EBITDA. PAT again has moved from 4% levels to 9%. One of the key contributors here has also been how we have managed our cash and debt, moving from a net debt company to a net cash company, also reflects in our interest costs, which has sequentially come down over the last uh, four years, and we will continue this path to remain net cash. Our free cash flow in 2024, as I mentioned, was 168 crores, and we are fourth year consecutively a net cash company at 236 crores. So this was a slide which we wanted to present to the investors. It was about three years back. There was a commitment on the strategy, and it is important to demonstrate that the strategy is actually working in the numbers. From a medium-term outlook, having seen how the strategy has transformed the business, we provides us a lot of confidence in terms of how we see the business will grow going forward in a three to five year kind of scale. We see our order book uh, over a three, five years to reach about three X of our revenues. Revenues to grow in a 15 to 20% CAGR. EBITDA to be in the 13 to 15% range. Again, the triggers being more O&M, more EP, going more and more international. We're looking at MIA as an important geography to drive this growth, Southeast Asia, um, uh, the CIS countries, all of this help us go grow more international. And industrial, of course, oil and gas, we are one of the leaders. You would have seen all the marquee names in the oil and gas sector already. And these are companies which we are working with even today. ROC, about 20%. We will continue to remain on our commitment to stay asset light. We are not interested in investing in assets. We are interested in EPC and O&M. And more importantly, be a technology player. We will not be a contractor. We will be a technology player. And that is how we will remain asset light and generate good ROCs, about 20%. O&M reaching 20% of total revenues. This is an important ticker for us because it provides stability, predictability on revenue, cash flow, margins, very low asset uh, uh, it's, it's less heavy on the balance sheet. 
we will remain net cash positive this is another commitment and from a return perspective uh, on the roe front to be more than 15% this is what we had uh, for the day in terms of explaining the business outlook as well as uh, the performance um so we can now open the floor for uh, interactive q and a and we'll be glad to answer any questions Thanks. Hi everyone. I have my colleagues with mics, so you can raise your hand. If, uh, one small request: if you can just introduce yourself and the organization you're from. Thank you. Uh, hi, sir. My name is Dhananjay Bagrodia from ASK. Uh, just wanted to ask you. Yeah. uh when you talk about hydrogen and semiconductor and new opportunities uh for that total capex how much is attribut attributable to us <clears throat> on this kind of hydrogen projects the total capital required will be many times more than what is invested for water hmm. as i said we would limit our contribution to the total project in terms of water and water is something which is we are specialized in that's where our domestic or domain expertise is and it will not be a major portion of the total investment because the green energy the electrodes and all that process and the funding and other things will be a major part and setting up a water treatment plant will not be a major so it be like minuscule in percentage wise right it will be like single low single today day. because things have not matured to that level mm. and still the cost is evolving of hydrogen as you know even today commercially it's not viable the yeah. green hydrogen okay? okay it's emerging so i'm sure over a period of time all this cost is going to come down and as a percentage water will go up because water there's nothing more we can do today it will be i think less than 10% maybe when the cost of all this is coming down maybe we go a few notches up 12 to 15% it's my guess i repeat i don't have any authentic number it's my guess okay and so spark to uh, in terms of working capital what levers do we have in terms of improving that as we move ahead are we focusing on some projects where we'll get better working capital terms or anything on those lines yeah i would try to respond and i will leave it to my colleagues to give their views today we have done all what is required we told you about uh, going for projects which are multilaterally funded sovereign guarantees letters of credit these are all ensuring that we don't have a huge delay in payment collection okay okay but multilaterals will have their own challenges of having at least a four month payment cycle because it has to go to the funding agency to get your letters of credit and the payments release plus we have gone into ep c is the one which causes delay on the project ep should be better third you have seen that we are going to increase our service contribution of onm which is also a annuity business fourth we are into international <coughs> which is payment cycle is better than domestic these are some of our strategy points which we are working on and it will go this year you have to take a abrasion because we had some three four large projects during this year whether it was pagla in bangladesh whether it's chennai major diesel mumbai project all this you do initially 6 8 months of engineering then you start your supplies and construction and here most of it was done in the last quarter or even last month march obviously this cash will not come in 30 days yeah. so it will take its 3 4 months but you will see what you are seeing now at the closure of march all this will be liquidated in next quarter so hopefully when we give you a balance sheet in 
September already this would have been liquidated. Congratulations, sir. Good work. Thank you. So my name is Rohit Natarajan. Uh, so this is here. Okay. My name is Rohit Natarajan. I'm coming Little from Little louder. Rohit Natarajan. I hope I'm audible. Yes. I'm uh, coming from Aditya Birla Sun Life Insurance. Uh, so my first question is more to do with the order backlog that you have at this point in time. Uh, within next three to five years, do you have a vision to double it or triple it? And if you have... Uh, how do you uh, uh, plan to execute it? I mean, what is the non-fund base limits that you have right now? What exactly is the uh, uh, verticals that you would be looking at? For instance, how much will be the international exposure? How much will be the domestic? Also, to uh, give us some color on the international part, because there are there is Veolia, Suez, the other such big players over there. How would you differentiate yourself over there? And within the domestic space, obviously, it's in the, the, the Indian municipal bodies. They do not appreciate much of uh, these technologies that you talk about. Their pricing power is quite limited. So help us understand those bigger picture. A lot of questions, I should say. <laughs> so I think from a uh, from a order book perspective, uh, I think you've seen our medium-term outlook. We have said we want to have at least 3x of our revenues uh, uh, in our uh, order book, and that is that is at least what we will aim for. And and we have already already said in some of our communications yes, yesterday, day before, that we are looking at about a 16,000 crore order book uh, by the end of this year. Uh, and from a three to five year perspective, some of the guidances that we have given in terms of how we want the mix of business is answering your question. One, internationally, over 50%. Where internationally? Middle East is going to be a growth engine for us. Africa will consistently be a growth driver. CIS countries is an opportunity. Southeast Asia is an opportunity. These are going to be the international growth drivers. Second, in terms of uh, industrial oil and gas, we are leaders in oil and gas. That will we will continue to build on that. That's a 30 percent uh, of revenues that we are looking at in operation and maintenance. Today it's a 15, 17 percent. We want to take it to 20 percent. So this is the kind of color that we are seeing in terms of business over the next three to five years. Uh, and and in the immediate term, next 12, 18 months, uh, we see good traction mainly in the Middle East market to have more orders. I think you asked some question which he said yeah. too many questions. So he maybe missed two last yeah. of your questions, which yeah. I will answer. Sure. You talked about competition, global. You named Veolia, Suez. See, we don't see Veolia as competitor anymore. And this must be clearly understood. We are a technology, EPC and ONM contractor. And Veolia is asset heavy. You can go, Google it, go to the net. They like owning assets. We hate owning assets. So we don't compete. Because what we do, they don't like doing. What they do, we don't like doing. Suez, majority part of Suez has been acquired by Veolia. I'm sure you know that. So Suez has become very small and only in limited markets and limited business sector. So we also don't see them anymore as a big competitor today in this market. Next, you asked about Indian clients do not appreciate technology. Not true. Not true. If that was the case, we would not build advanced technology projects in India. There's not a single oil and gas, whether it's private like Reliance, SRs of the world, or whether it's PSUs, Indian oils, HPCL, BPCL, and all that, where they don't have recycle of their wastewater. Okay? MRP desalination. Reliance also desalination. HPCL, WISAC, diesel. If these are the technologies not valued by them, then what they have done in building a plant and selecting good companies to build those plants. 
because water is a lifeline for all these industries. Take a case of recycle. I told you Ghaziabad, Chennai, Surat. If it is recycle, is it a run of the bill product? Is it technology the clients are not appreciating? Then why they are giving orders and getting the best of the companies to execute those orders and not only execute, also operate for 20 years so that they get reliable performance. Desalination recently in India, Asia's largest desalination plant we are executing. Who were the competition? Four. French, Israeli, Spanish and in Pabak. If they don't appreciate this technology, what is this 400 MLD diesel plant is doing? So I don't think I agree fully that Indian clients do not appreciate good companies and good technologies. Uh, so finally, on the margins front, if I have to appreciate where the margin drivers are, like do, is it more to do with the international uh, orders within that? Is it the industrial or the municipal based? Where exactly are the margin and the cash flow balancing looks like? From a margin front, um, the drivers that we have put in the strategy, EP will be a key margin driver. What EP does, there is no construction. So there is more control on time. You don't pass through the construction in the books, which means automatically the margins of are reflective of the business you do. This is one margin driver. Number two, industrial, faster turnaround projects, more advanced technology projects. Appreciation of value over price is something that we see. This is another margin driver which has been there, which will continue to be there. Number three, international. Internationally, the specifications are richer. The payment terms are better. The cycles are better. And even on EPC projects, we are able to bring large construction partners to kind of de-risk us from construction because they would take both the financial as well as the operation risk of construction. Number four will be operation maintenance, high margin again, very good cash flows, very low risk cash and carry business. And this moving up as it has been doing will be another ticker. So these are the four triggers and tickers which will continue to help us sustain and improve our margins. Thank you. Maybe we can add one uh, to what Skanda said. Even the ticket size of the plants, what we have been, you know, in the last 25, 27 years, what you have been seeing us, it's continuously going up. So as the ticket size of the plants goes up, you will see that the margins will also be better because the kind of overheads you have to invest into execution of every project is, you know, uh, becoming more and more efficient as you grow the ticket size. This is another thing which you can watch us. Thank you. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, sir, the Amish from GM Financial. Uh, congrats, sir, for a very good year, at least in terms of, uh, you know, profitable growth, as you said, and walking the talk. Uh, sir, a couple of observations here. Uh, this year, our order inflow, uh, was lower than the, you know, revenue that we had, which is an execution. So our outstanding order book to, you know, trailing revenue, uh, the number is slightly lower. I understand it is more than, you know, three times that we are targeting. Uh, and also uh, we note that, you know, last year this time we were shying away from saying that we'll grow at, say, a single digit, whereas now we have a visibility of 15 to 20% growth on a, you know, three to five year basis. So uh, uh, great news there. Uh, the question is, uh, sir, if you can just share with us some, you know, pipeline uh, that, you know, we are talking about, are we participating in, you know, some uh, tenders and or, you know, negotiating bilaterally, uh, which gives us that confidence that at least the pipeline that we are talking about is, uh, you know, giving us that uh, confidence of, say, 15, 20% growth. Uh, and that, you know, uh, split pro between, say, India versus, uh, you know, say, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, that will give us some, uh, you know, uh, hope that, you know, uh, this one is uh, tangible. Uh, the context is, you know, this uh, uh, code of conduct election, which probably would have lost some three months. And also, if you can give us some sense there, we would appreciate the, you know, guidance better in terms of pipeline and inquiry. Thanks. So, as I said, and I said very confidently that pipeline is very robust. We have a very solid pipeline. We all know last quarter and this quarter, India business has slowed down because 
decision making has already come to stand still a couple of months before code of conduct and maybe one month after the elections are resolved the government is formed the ministries are allocated the budgets are done all that it will take time maybe july august it will start rolling again but we didn't stay quiet we used this time to shift some of our resources from the indian region to the middle east and africa region that is the region we have really grown and as i said to somebody earlier that in the last 4 5 months we have submitted bids worth 1 billion dollars in gulf region alone that shows how solid is the pipeline these are all real projects these are mega projects these are projects upwards of 100 200 million dollars and these are the kind of projects we have we have submitted and there's not huge competition there are three or four companies on each project have submitted so we fancy our chances they are all in technical evaluation and i'm sure in next couple of months they will start opening the price bid and start declaring a preferred bidder <clears throat> we are very confident that we'll grow our pipeline and uh, next year when we meet here you will see a very decent number of order book which we will have which will give you confidence that we have truly a four year or three year revenue thing and also we have grown this 15 20% in terms of top line thanks the gentleman here somebody can pass the mic here please Uh, hi yeah. ma yeah yeah um my name one, is one, one minute madam i just finish this i'll give you i'll come back to you go ahead no 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 wait wait Hello, my name is yeah. Sharak Chandra. I'm an investment advisor. Uh, you have a top line of about three thousand crores. Uh, you have a profitability of about two fifty crores, and uh, you have debtor days, which is quite high, and you have debtors which are more than six months of, you know, about five hundred crores, and you have written down, uh, made provisions of one twenty five crores as doubtful debtors. Now the question is. you know uh, have you written off any of the debtors uh, and uh, most of your business is coming from government so how does this uh, you know why do you have to make provisions uh, for doubtful debtors thank you i will give you my layman per version or cfo can give you a technical part see there is a provision under the indian accounting standards which is given by the institute which is called ecl provisions which has a delay and uh, uh, doubtful receivables you have to make a provision it's not about management confidence whether it's collectible not collectible it's not about government's ability and affordability to pay it is simple rule that you have to have a ecl policy and you have to make a provision as per that policy when you collect you reverse it the technical portion i give it to the cfo uh i think this 125 crores if i heard it right is yeah. it's not a number that i recognize i it's at least not the provision that we have made are you talking about the provision we have done in 23 24 yeah your balance sheet uh, numbers i'm talking about you have made uh, you know debtor days you have defined as you know 500 crores which is more than 6 months and 125 crores which you have made provision for doubtful debtors so this is the cumulative provisions over years as mr mittal said majority of this will be in the nature of delay provisions because there will be milestone payments which will be delayed there will be retention payments there is also time delay in collection so under uh, the indas we are required to make delay provisions and as it is collected this is reverse back so nothing has been written off till now uh, in the history of the company no no you have seen last year can't say in in the history of the company last year we all know 300 crores we have written off no okay. that is for the subsidiaries which you wrote no 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 for the listed company which was so many years we talked about genco yes or no everybody 
And last year we wrote this 300 crores off. In the same room we stood and told you. So we can't say that in the business we run. It cannot be that you don't. The idea is you learn. And like I told you, we learned we will not take any contracts from state government. Okay, that's a learning. But there is a price to the learning. And we go very uh, clearly, transparently, we told you what we have written off. Okay, so there's nothing to hide there. It's a business you do. There will be some provisions have to be made as per India's, as per our CFO. We have made that. We are completely compliant, audited, presented to the shareholders. So going forward, uh, you are assuring that, you know, you'll do business in which you are confident that you'll get payments. And most of them are multilateral. Uh, yes. Uh, Absolutely. This so this kind, of a, this kind of this kind of what I made in my speech. Okay. That 98, 99 percent of them today have a payment security. Any one of you can check our order book and check the statement I made is right or wrong. Just to clarify, even today our payment securities are at that level. And as I clarified, most of provisions are for delay. So this is not a question of no government will reach a situation where they cannot pay. It may be delayed. Some of these will also be reconciliations towards the end of the project. So it's actually not an inability to pay from the government. When project is closed, there are some things which are reconciled and and you adjust. But even today, we don't have a situation that somebody does not pay us. That's not the case. Today, nine, more than 95%, 97% of our EPC book is either multilaterally funded, sovereign funded, federal government funded uh, or it is backed by a letter of credit. So there is no denial of payment. There may be delay of payment, but that delay of payment is again provisioned as per the accounting standards. Uh, but this delay of payment may be because of the specifications which are given for the project and probably they were not meeting the specifications. Uh, uh, can that also be the case? Our CEO sub will also get in. See, the, this is a bit technical. Any project has its life cycle. You do your part of the work and you are doing as a part of overall project. So rest of the component, if they are taking a bit longer time in completing, our portion is completed. So when it gets commissioned, then there is a payment milestone that after commissioning, though you have completed, there is no concern from that uh, payment coming through, but somebody else will complete. That is the payment term you have signed off, so it takes longer time, and that is where you just make a provision. But it's not that payment is in question. So just these are the kind of things which come in. Please, please continue. Yeah, I think you made a very big statement here. We have a hundred years of track record, okay, and we have built more than six thousand five hundred plants. I can tell you with my hand on my heart, there's not a single plant which has not delivered what we have contracted to deliver. You said that we are not meeting the performance specification. We would not be number three company globally if we don't make our plants to the promise we have made. So none of our plants, there can be some tweaking required to be done, commissioning required to be done, some adjustment, troubleshooting. It happens in any machinery, but there's no plant built by us which are rejected by the client and it's not meeting the performance. I want to make this very clear because if we are into the business, what you're thinking, we should not exist. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Lady there. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello. My name is Nidisha and I'm from ICSA Securities. Uh, I had I had two questions. The first one is that uh, you mentioned on medium term, uh, we're targeting revenue CAGR to be 15 to 20 percent. Uh, but in the last three years, we've seen that the revenue has degrown. I understand that there are a lot of initiatives that you have taken and are still to undertake to, to reach those uh, levels of CAGR. Uh, my question would be, when do you think uh, those would kick in? And by, by when can we say that we have finally achieved the 15 to 20 percent CAGR? That is my first question. I think I've said this, uh, this was the same question which came up in a CNBC interview post our result declaration. I spent quite a bit of time 
on this uh, CNBC to explain this. And I'm going to try to explain the same thing to you as a similar question you're asking. <clears throat> First, we have been very, very clear and vocal in the last three years. Even today, you have seen that we want to reduce our C. Okay. When we reduce our C, naturally, which was passing through our books will not pass through our books. That portion of C is gradually going to come down, which you have seen over the years. It's slowly coming down. It will never be zero because there are projects which client will insist that we should take the C. But our philosophy, guidance to our team is to reduce the C component. So that is missing in the top line, which you had earlier, which is not there today. And this has helped to get your margins growing. We were at 7 8% on EBITDA. 0.5% on PAT. Today we are 14, 15% on EBITDA and 9% on PAT. So you can see very clearly this has grown. So it is really doesn't matter whether you have a revenue same or little less even as long as your profitability and cash. And this is thrown out some 250 crores of cash. If even if we are at the same revenue. So that's number one part of my answer to your question. Second, again, some to rationalize this, some of our European subsidiaries, which were almost stagnant, was not giving us the bottom line and cash, was only giving us top line. We have divested it. And we have made the announcement, I think it's in the public domain, that two of our European subsidiaries, we have divested. That's another 170, 180 crores, which was there in the previous years, is not there. So... This is the two reasons you have not seen the top line grow, but you have seen a substantial, almost doubling of the bottom line. Going forward, why did we make this statement of 15, 20%? Because we are more or less reaching a steady state of C coming down and subsidiary divestment happening. Now, if you see from this year, we are very hopeful that we will be in that region with the kind of order backlog we have and the order pipeline we have. So I think we are saying that with a lot of conviction that we will achieve something in the range of 15-20%. Uh, so uh, by that, uh, can we assume that 15-20% would be something that we could see from FY25 onwards or would that take a little longer than that? No, no. You see from FY25 onwards, Maybe you will see more 15, 16% and towards the three years later, you will see more towards 20%. Because uh, that by the time most of the C would have taken care. Uh, my second and last question would be, uh, you have recently launched the Blue Seed Initiative and um, I would like some kind of clarity on where the funding for this initiative is going to come from and how much are you, um, how much have you uh, envisioned uh, capital inside this, and again, where is that going to come from? It will come from companies' internal accruals. We are not going to go and borrow money. And these are pre-seed and seed capital. So it's not a lot of money, but it's, as the name says, seed to seed and fuel these startups so that they have initial capital to develop their ideas. So I don't think, as I said before, we are not talking about millions of capital going into this. It's our know-how, it's our experience, and our access to the global markets is what we are bringing to this young entrepreneurs. Yeah, please. Sir, Kamesh Pujwani from Meta and Vakil. First and foremost, Many heartiest congratulations. Thank you. To your current team, the one before you and the one before that, you have completed 100 years. A 100 years comes in three generations. And you have successfully completed not only 100 years, you have completed 100 years by the daughter taking over the parent plant, as you mentioned in your opening remarks. Thank you. And a remarkable thing, 125 plus patents. It speaks volumes of your prowess, engineering skill, and application. 
and in your presentation you also said there are two perennial sources of water one is the sea so desalination is here to stay and you are building the biggest desalination plant of 400 million liters per day so i going forward i see desalination contributing virtually 40 to 50% of your top line but the question which was coming in my mind that you have given a guidance of 15 to 20% with a order book of 114 billion i personally see this order book will be exhausted in the next 3 years or even less so your guidance is very conservative of course very thoughtfully done and the last point is we must celebrate 100 years with now free cash flows coming in with your uh, positive outlook or positive concurrence in my thought with a one is to one bonus issue i thought you should say, you said we should celebrate it with cocktail and dinner let's break for <laughs> cocktail and dinner <laughs> thank you i think yes i think we agree with your comments and of course we'll take it to our board your suggestion and seek their guidance the thought which i also wanted to share is on this desalination and the work which we are doing in a various in various aspects uh, are we going forward are with 1500 people on our payrolls with 1500 people on our payrolls are we capable of doubling our turnover or we have to add more people and add more uh, material and men to achieve our objective i think my colleague mr vardarajan mentioned to you the ticket sizes are going up yes yes of course we will have to add some people but we don't have to double and triple our force because a project of 100 crores or 100 million doesn't mean that we have to add eight times the more uh, staff we need a higher competency of the staff yeah. higher skills of the staff yeah. to manage this international clients and the challenging environment but yes. not necessary the numbers numbers will go up but not to that order and this as i told you we started with only six people and today yeah. we have 1500 yes that itself has shown in last 26 27 years yes. of journey we have grown and i'm sure in next 25 years we will grow further and uh, it's not been a issue with us because we have adopted a certain policy of hiring young training them and molding into baba culture of doing things this has worked for us i'm sure going forward we'll continue this strategy of building our workforce which are also emotionally attached in today's materialistic world attrition is a biggest concern yeah. so it's also we have to keep that in mind that we have to build people who are not only with the company for just money they are also here to learn emotionally get connected and build their careers absolutely sir we we just to add we are also moving towards digitization as the whole world is moving towards so this is also adding to the so called productivity Yeah. so it's it's not about multiplying more number of people with existing people how can i optimize like for example if i have 100 plants which i have to operate and maintain there are some core competencies which i need to invest to make sure the plants are running well now if i have a central place where i'm able to connect to all these plants digitally because all of them have scadas and all the kind of digital requisite, requisite infrastructure which can enable me to connect through the internet so we are able to even take over the plant sitting in our office we rectify what is required and give it back to them these kind of infrastructure is something we are we invested and we are moving also towards using ai and this that etc so we are moving digitally also this also will add to productivity absolutely brilliant sir and all the best thank you i think the gentleman in the last row he want on the right side somebody yes please get up and introduce yourself and give the mic to this gentleman good evening everyone this is naman maheshwari from kp investments uh, so first of all many congratulations for what we have achieved globally we are number 3 even ai recognizes our presence in the space right uh, so there is only one question which i want to ask uh, we are giving a guidance of 15% growth does this include 
revenue f- generated from the biogas initiative as well because that itself would you know be a 15 1600 crore potential business i think this is yet to kick off we just signed and we announced a few months back and during the code of conduct we have not even approached the market for decision making we have to go and tap the market and we expect to have a good traction in the market so to the best of our knowledge yes it includes the way we have seen in the next two years how it will pick up but if it picks up much faster with government's policy and intervention obviously we'll stand here next year and revise the guidance great sir all the very best thank you yeah yeah uh, uh, hi yeah please go ahead uh, my name is hardik i'm from param capital um so three questions for you sir so of the green shoot areas if you could talk a little bit about what kind of traction you've been seeing so far and if you've seen anything meaningful develop there so the green shoot areas i'm talking about are um, green hydrogen and semiconductors any question see on you, you're talking about hydrogen and semiconductor what is the development that we have had till now correct anything in the green shoot areas see right right now i mean semiconductors yes we are looking at uh, companies we are establishing relationship inquiries are going on hydrogen is little far away it's more it has it will be more at pilots for the next couple of years we'll see how the cost of the overall production of hydrogen comes down that's when scale will come and we'll start seeing inquiries of of a certain respectable uh, level okay fantastic and um another quick question um so uh, apologies if i missed this i think there was some version of this question asked uh, so you mentioned the order book for fi25 will go to let's say 16000 uh, crores um and you plan to generate a revenue cagr of 15% this year so again just doing some math out we about 3500 crores uh, as a percentage of order book you know what is your appetite to sort of scale up what percentage of your order book you kind of want to execute in a year uh would love to just understand that a bit better See, typically the epc book if it's a ep project anywhere between 24 to 30 months is the unwinding cycle if it's a epc project depending on the size it could be anywhere between 36 to 42 months o and m could be 2 years 5 years 7 10 like a chennai desal is also 20 years so you'll have to gather the mix and in the order book depending on the mix this will be the unwinding that will uh, normally happen fantastic and, great that's all yes gentlemen here please stand up introduce yourself hi bud this is pavan from fed and so can you please explain the capital expenditure in ep plan projects and then epc projects separately like how does the amount of money that goes to ep partner go and work and then also milestone based dependencies when there is a construction partner who is separate from you and who are some of the construction partners that you work with in and when you are doing ep project and then the c is being handled by someone else see when you talk about capital both whether it's epc or ep from a client is the same capital he has to deploy whether he has one contractor to do the epc or he has two contractor one doing ep and other doing epc okay so capital deployed for a project will be same now when you come across the partners we work with the construction portion is very local so we can't have one partner for pan india or one partner globally we need to have a local partner for every project and we have got used to certain partners where we have worked with and we like to continue our relationship with them or sometimes the c is not even part of our so client selects the c part so they award c part separately and epc part separately so trust it answers your question uh, so just to put it in a different perspective if 
what would be a cost of like a 100 million per 100 million liter per day project overall cost and what percentage of would would it go to the ep partner see there's no fixed percentage because it depends the on the technology of the plant the higher the technology less will be civil like if you go for recycle plants and desal plants maybe only 20 25% will be civil you go to conventional water treatment plant 50% will be civil so depending on the type of the plant this ratio will vary yeah gentlemen Hi, this is Smith Doshi from Wise Capital. So, uh, one question with technical: uh, What is the margin difference between EP, EPC, and O and M? And uh, uh, as you have said that we have bidded for one billion dollar of uh, projects. So, in that uh, project, uh, what would be the portion in EP? That is one first thing. Second thing: uh, What gives our company a right to win? we have 125 plus patents we have we don't have so many comparables uh, in our listed space and as you have said that uh, in international market we are also globally number 3 and number 5 so uh, what our pet, what make uh, what our patent makes difference uh, in projects so if you give some anecdotes of examples then it would be very very good for us as a layman to get understanding of uh, that thing better right If the first question is margin difference onm or service business is always at least 50 to 70 percent better margins than the epc business and ep business are always about 20 percent better margin than the epc business because the c is passed through and ep business 100 percent of margin is accrued by us now how the technology makes a impact is very simple today all the clients are smart they are evaluating the bids on life cycle cost net present value so either your capital cost is lower your operating cost is lower or both are lower so our technologies are developed to either reduce the capital cost or the operating cost or both there's no use of developing new and advanced technology which cannot reduce the life cycle cost so all our effort in developing new products or processes to reduce the life cycle cost and that is what is helping us to win projects without sacrificing the margins so thank you so much hi i'm kishore sonekar an investor <laughs> a few minutes back you said that uh, a lesson learned from right off that you will not take a state government projects right am i right yes yeah now going forward desalination is will be the 40% of our business that is also right when you said uh, when you one one of the question was asking just say said, yes right? it is right right then all the c is attached with the states yes so how we will win the business then because chennai example Asia's largest desalination plant. It is in Chennai, which is the second longest sea coast in the world after Miami. Yeah. So both definitions, what you said, is there. Yeah. And it's a Chennai local body, Tamil Nadu state government. Who's funding this project? Just now I said. I'm sure you were present when I said right, this. Right, right. But see, the gentlemen, maybe in the front rows, are more active. So JICA, Japanese multilateral agency is funding the project. What we said, the payment is not coming from state government; it's coming from Japan, JICA. State government is not funding. I'm not going into their treasury to collect my payment. They only certify the work done. Payment comes from Tokyo. So get it clear. water is a state subject water is not a central subject in our constitution it or every time the business we are in state is going to be the counterparty but funding we don't have to depend on the state and that's the reason we select projects which i told you and our cfo also repeated multilaterally funded projects does not give me any exposure on the local bodies or state government number 1 
नंबर टू वी गो फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट इवन इन यूपी कोलकाता विच आर स्टेट बट फंडेड बाय नमामि गंगे सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट विथ गिविंग अ सॉवरेन गारंटी ऑफ रीपेमेंट एंड दैट हैज टू बी अंडरस्टूड प्रोजेक्ट विल बी विथ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट बट पेमेंट गारंटी इज बाय मल्टीलैटरल और बाय सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट थैंक यू अंडरस्टूड थैंक यू यस सर दीपेन इयर दीपेन शाह uh first of all thanks for the presentation and uh, i had one question on the onm business which is the annuity part of the business uh, could you just give us some more insights into you know uh, how does the onm business pan out once you have completed the project like when does the onm start generally what is the period of uh, the onm business and uh, you know what proportion of the capital cost is the onm part over a maybe 5 to 10 year period that would be greatly helpful yeah so different projects it depends on how the project is architected in terms of point and duration when we complete the project it starts from 10 years 15 years 20 years so there is no fixed uh, defined period depends on how customers have architected the project but anything between 10 to 20 years it it ranges from okay but uh, when does the onm start like you suppose pro complete a project in fy25 so the onm starts immediately next year or exactly the moment you finish the project construction is completed next day next day onm starts and what proportion is in terms of revenue it's a 100 crore capital cost project so how much will be the onm over the next 10 year period it would be uh, depends on the type of project what we are doing the kind of uh, involvement it is their kind of manpower kind of chemical involvement so different projects would be having a different thing what duration you are talking about so it is not a very fixed formula for that take the chennai diesel we are talking about one of the largest projects 50% of the epc is onm for 20 years okay 50% over the next 20 years okay 20 years is an example of diesel if it's sewage treatment plant there will be different ratio if it's a recycle plant it will be of a different ratio because it depends on manpower machine spare parts chemicals all this comes into the onm cost so depending on the technology this number can vary but anything in this order of magnitude and uh, lastly is there are there any penalty clauses associated with any of our projects and uh... like how have we panned over the last couple of years or 3 4 years but yeah that's a inherent part of all projects irrespective of location irrespective of sector we are working but uh, uh, that's a universal phenomena when you are into project business there are penalties for performance there are penalties for delay but we know how to handle those situations we every day do risk assessment every periodically we assess that and try to mitigate that and that is what is our robustness in project delivery okay sir thank you very much and all the best to you thank you the last uh, and, uh, uh, hello sir somebody is there who is this put your hand where how oh, yeah on. hello Go sir ahead. hi this is vinit from karma capital firstly congratulating the team for completing a century of the business uh, one question for you mr mithil that uh, do you foresee any such 400 mld kind of chennai diesel plants coming out for bidding in the next two years specifically about india and then i have a question for shailesh definitely i think uh, chennai has shown the way that to build water security in a water starved rain shadow region in chennai to build a water security by the time we build this plant 50% of the population in chennai will be fed from diesel water if chennai is shown the way i don't think many states and cities will not follow that so i am very hopeful and it also makes uh, sense to build water security when you are on the coastline and go for more desalination it is i repeat is a myth when people say it's expensive the question to be asked expensive compared to what it's a relative term expensive what compared to what 
because today diesel water is much cheaper than what we all get as a tanker water in our home okay tanker water comes at maybe 2000 2500 liters for 10000 so 25 paise diesel comes in single digit 7 8 9 paise a liter plus it's much more safer you get a piped water you know exactly the quality of water which is coming tanker you don't know where this guy has picked up he's dumped into your sump and your watchman is pressing the button and goes to the overhead tank and we all use that so it's also not safe and reliable whereas diesel water is safe affordable reliable and sustainable source so i am very very hopeful that governments will open their eyes and many more projects will come over the years thank you thank you and just one question for shailesh that uh, shailesh where are we in terms of the one city one operator kind of projects uh, and does our 20% contribution from onm that we are expecting builds in any project uh, awarding uh, from that kind of a model that we are already in so this one city one operator concept was a innovative concept we pursued with few people with the government and we have seen the light of the day and that is what we are operating not a usual phenomena we are doing canvassing we are reaching out to many people mm-hmm. people have shown interest they have seen the success out of it what the value we are creating for the customers so there is some traction but uh, bringing it to tendering stage bring, bringing it to bidding stage that is yet work in progress but we see that people are seeing the value out of it i think uh, we'll take last two questions and then we'll spend a few minutes for our 100 year celebration and then we'll break for cocktail and dinner so last two questions please yeah too many hands for the last two questions so we have to combine yeah. some of the questions or yeah. we'll take it post uh, uh, our 100 year celebration please go ahead yeah hello uh, my name is praveen uh, from aquadas capital advisors i had a couple of questions for you uh, given your international exposure to geographies like africa and the cis states how do you mitigate the geopolitical risk involved there if for us uh, we are very clear for ages and decades now we are doing international business cross border businesses we are very clear <clears throat> that we always would have a combination of onshore and offshore one onshore we need to get the local effect and get into the local market client relationship subcontractor sub supplier management we have always a local team at the ground and we have a offsite team which is mostly based either in austria or india or turkey these are experts in terms of engineering technology procurement and this combination has worked to mitigate the currency risk we always have contracts in two currencies what is offshore supply we always take in dollars or euro what is a local portion we always take in local currency so we don't take any currency risk and as i said it's multilaterally funded or letters of credit so that will also avoid payment risks so this is the way we have somehow perfected our international geography business last question please understood one one last question on this uh, uh, you are not going to take two questions just one just one. <laughs> okay so uh, you you spoken about uh, increasing the proportion of the ondm part, part of the business right in the medium term uh, but if i look at your order book you are talking about a very sharp acceleration there right where likely part of it will come from the enp part of the business right which as you explained earlier it, it could be anywhere in terms of execution between 2 to 3 years so in the backdrop of a sharp acceleration in the enp part of the business how do you see the ondm proportion going up in parallel with that please we have to see in india most of the epc business is backed up by ondm but that's not the case with international business there's uh, no dbo business design build and then ondm very few so it's a more still a indian phenomena where epc is followed by onm but still that is not the international norm one question in the front row 
who is going to take uh, have you asked question anybody who has not asked the question before both have not asked then go ahead you go ahead. absolutely i think we have discussed it already i told you on a wastewater treatment plant it's a completely circular economy 100% is resource recovery the organics are converted to gas harnessed water is seized recycled and harnessed the solid residue goes as manure as a fertilizer so it's completely resource recovery and circular economy nothing goes as waste now more and more we are getting into this uh, hydrogen or compressed biogas there is going to be phenomena of carbon credits in india okay we don't specially have to go abroad to get our carbon credits i think this is something written on the wall it's going to happen there are polluting industries which cannot meet their targets they will have to come to the industries like us and buy the carbon credit 100% very valid question very futuristic question it's not too distant future this will happen i'm not a expert but if you are asking me question and i have to take a guess maybe 2 3 years not very far because every country has signed a treaty to achieve certain carbon greenhouse gas reduction so if they are not going to achieve they are going to buy that credits so this is very much on okay can we move after this few minutes we will go through and Any questions then, uh, offline so much guys we have a small uh, video clip to share with you
invite Mr. Mittal and his fund to share your experience of your journey with us all. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Again, I think uh, welcome to all, ladies and gentlemen. I think good evening, and uh, we celebrate this truly remarkable milestone, which you have just seen a short video. Wabag's hundred-year anniversary. This centenary is just not a testament to our longevity, but a celebration of our incredible journey. from a modest startup which i explained to you with just six of us to a globally admired corporation that's the journey we have completed i want to take this moment when you all are present to extend my deepest gratitude to our esteemed investors and analyst your unwavering support and believe in our vision have been a pivotal in our success journey you saw the potential in us from the very beginning and you have stood by us through the challenges and triumph your investment and insight have been more than just financial backing they have been driving force behind our innovation and growth you have provided us with not only resources but also the confidence needed which is to push the boundaries and raise the bar exploring new or a horizons and continuously evolve over the past century we have transformed and expanded embracing the change and setting new standards in water sector this transformation has been possible only and only because of your steady vast steady fast partnership and trust in our capabilities together we have built a legacy of excellence and innovation one of the most rewarding rewarding aspect of our work is the opportunity to serve the communities whether it is in the urban center industrial hubs or corporate campuses access to clean water is just not a convenience it is a necessity for maintaining health productivity and overall all quality of life by providing innovative water treatment solutions tailored to the need of these communities we are not only ensuring access to safe and reliable water but also supporting economic growth environment sustainability and well-being looking ahead to the next 100 years i'm filled with optimism and excitement for the possibilities that lies ahead of us as the world continues to face complex challenges from the climate change to resource scarcity to the population growth the importance of our work has never been greater we have a responsibility not only to contribute providing innovative water solutions but also to lead the way of advancing sustainability reliance and inclusivity in everything we do on behalf of my board of directors management team and we all waba guys i would like to extend my deepest gratitude to all of you for your unwavering support and your commitment to our shared vision together we have achieved a remarkable success over the past century and i have no doubt that together 
we will continue to make this positive difference in the world of generations to come thanks for being part of this integral part of our successful journey thank you very much i'd like to invite mr vardarajan as well to share your experience thank you i think i'm not that fortunate enough to be part of the entire 100 years but i think uh, 27 years uh, of experience uh, with this company from whatever small what mr mithil was talking about and to now grow into such a uh, organization where we are very proud that we are an indian multinational company and uh, we are able to provide sustainable solutions to so many countries and we we have evolved ourselves holding our uh, whatever philosophy that we started with that we should be very technology focused and we should have certain principles like asset light etc what what we were talking about so that the growth is is not impeded the growth is naturally uh, being passed atus has been uh, very enriching and learning for me uh, and particularly i have been as a ceo for the start of the company up to 2015 i was i been there group ceo for so i met most of you i have learned many things from you and again it gives me an opportunity of learning in this kind of forums again uh, we feel very proud that we are able to contribute to uh, the economy around and we it it gives us more uh, confidence going forward with the kind of uh, technology that we have that we can uh, excel we can bring all those higher uh, order of technologies into countries where it is required and we will be able to add more efficiency to whatever the uh, fundamental uh, uh, for human living that we are we are dealing with so uh, i take this opportunity to to thank you so much for being with us for trusting us and uh, evincing confidence in us and uh, this really gives us a lot of strength and uh, we hope that we will fulfill uh, your expectations going forward thank you so much thank you so much mr vardarajan uh, 100 years of um, an incredible journey some things truly are larger than life those chalu kore i'd like to thank um, everyone for being here and taking ta- your time out to celebrate this 100 years with us um, on behalf of the verba management I'd like to thank everyone physically and virtually present um, this blues the investor meet we'd like to welcome you all to join us for cocktails and dinner thank you thank you